Hi there. So this is us making uh, another little layout to fit a gap that I have. So this is me trying to drill the legs in and um, I give up quite quickly because the hand drill is a bit of hard work. It's got to have legs fitted because of where it's going to go in the study. This tabletop is, there we go, I'm giving up and using the uh, proper power tools. This is an old desktop that exactly fits a gap that I've got. I've just added a couple of bits at the baton, a baton at the back there just to give me another inch, just to give me a little bit of room. It's going to have a first radius curve on it and it's really an update on Homewood, which uh, a number of you will remember. So it's to replace that. Not an ideal piece of wood because it's very heavy, but once it's in place, it's staying there and the weight of the board means that it should be fairly rigid. So here I am just using the edge of a drill just to countersink for the screws. We were rushing a little bit because as you'll see later, it was looking like rain. So I've got my usual helper here. So it's just a bit of, it's about 15 mil melamine. So it is heavy, but it is very rigid and it will go exactly where I need it to. So here I'm just screwing the legs on. It's only got three legs because it rests on the edge of a desk and then on a windowsill. So it's a little unusual. I wish I could screw screws in that quickly in real life and you'll see the same in a minute when we're sawing. But Doug's using the time lapse so it's not too boring for you to watch. But these are just very basic woodworking skills. Nothing complicated here. Nothing, uh, I'm not using electric screwdrivers or anything like that. So anybody can do this. I've just got an old work, mate. That's actually my, that's about 30 years old, that work, mate, as is the drill, strangely enough. That's just Douglas pointing out it's in shot. This is shot from a tripod. So there are a couple of bits when we're not properly in shot. So I hope you can uh, put up with that, okay? So I've screwed the legs and what I'm doing here now is just putting a, a nail in to stop them swiveling, which is the way I was taught to do it years ago by a carpenter. So that's just the little legs. So just little four inch legs cut from a piece of rough timber. So this baseboard hasn't actually cost me anything. It's from an old desk. Uh, the timber came from a skip, uh, literally, as did the battening. So it's, it's actually cost us nothing to build it. And then in a moment, what you'll see is we're going to use some old laminate flooring that I've got for the back scenes. I'd like the back scenes to be a little harder, but I tend to work with what I've got. It's much easier that way and the old laminate flooring is quite rigid and it's quite light and it's not a bad height. So this is just marking it out using a set square to do the saw cut. Both sides. And then again we're going to, uh, there we go, if only you could saw that quickly. You can use an electric saw if you've got one but I find they don't do a very straight edge unless you've got a really good one and you know what you're doing. So I prefer to use manual saws. Many years ago, uh, in late 1970s when I was at school, we still got taught cabinet making. Um, and one of the few skills I actually gained from school was um, how to saw a straight line using a saw. So we're just tacking this on here. You could screw it, but um, I find nails are quite adequate. There's a lot of over-engineering goes on with model railways. People putting a huge amount of effort in as if it was going to be a piece of structural furniture. And a lot of them are not. They're just going to sit. So you don't need to overdo things. At this point, in fact, it's just beginning to spit with rain because it's the summer and it's the school holidays, so naturally it's raining. It is very heavy, it does take two of us to lift. One of the huge advantages of cardboard, ideally I would have made this out of cardboard, but again, it's, it's a time issue. Uh, that would have been quite time consuming and I had this piece of board ready to go. So it just means that I can be up and running that much quicker. So you can't actually see us in shot here. There we go. So here we are, this is it in place, a little bit tight. You can see it's where Homewood used to be. Um, so really I've just replaced it. Um, slightly different track plan. I'm not having a point at the top because I want to be able to have a decent length platform. So we're gonna have a decent length station there. Uh, here I'll put some bits in to show you what's going to go where. So we're going to have a diesel servicing point there. Good shit there. Station there. And probably signal box there somewhere. 
Um, it will take all my 25 and 29 diesels with a couple of Mark 1 coaches, which look okay, um, which will then pull into the station. The big difference to Homewood is that I've put this little siding here, which will go into a fiddle yard, and that will mean I can then run whatever locos I like. I don't need to have them stored on here the way I did with Homewood. So I've given the track a bit of a clean. I got some points from Eastbourne Models and Hobbies, £2.50 each. Um, so that was a bit of a find, keep the cost down. Old steel track has always cleaned up and it should be very good. Got my track mat there for when I get a chance to lay the ballast. And it'll just give me a little layout, easy to get at, quick to use. I've got some PK back scenes to go around it and it shouldn't really take too long once I get the time. But we've got a busy month coming up so we'll do an update when we can but just to show you the rough idea of what the concept is so we're just about to film a video and it started chucking it down hi if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click on the left for a previous video in this series click on the right for another video you will probably enjoy and don't forget to click to subscribe to be notified every time we upload a new video every single weekend subscribe